Femoral fractures, also known as broken thigh bones, are a serious injury that can occur in both adults and children. The femur is the largest and strongest bone in the body, making it difficult to break. However, when a fracture does occur, it can cause significant pain and disability. Let's revise some of the anatomy before delving into fractures of the femur. Now the femur, again, is the largest and strongest bone in the body. Proximally, the femur is composed of the specialized metaphyseal region, consisting of the head, neck, and the greater and lesser trochanters. Distally, the femur comprises the metaphyseal flare, which continues into the medial and lateral femoral condyles. The condyles are separated by the intercondylar notch. The shaft, or the diaphysis, is the segment inferior to the lesser trochanter and ends at the metaphyseal flare and condyles. The femur itself has an anterior bow. The linea aspera is the rough crest of bone running down middle third of the posterior femur and is the attachment site for various muscles and fascia. There are three abundant muscular compartments that envelope the femur. The main blood supply to the femur derives from the femoral artery, a continuation of the external iliac artery. The femoral artery passes under the mid portion of the inguinal ligament and divides into the superficial femoral artery and the deep femoral artery, also known as the profunda femoris. The neck of the femur is supplied by the lateral and medial circumflex arteries. I have a separate video that talks in more depth about the anatomy of the femur. Now, in this video, we're going to mainly focus on femoral shaft fractures. Femoral neck fractures will not be discussed in this video and will be discussed in a separate one. There are several types of femoral shaft fractures, including what's called a transverse fracture, which is a break that is perpendicular to the long axis of the femur. Then there's spiral fractures, a break that spirals around the femoral shaft. Oblique fractures, a break that is diagonal to the long axis of the femur. And comminuted fractures, a break that occurs in multiple locations may cause the bone to shatter into several pieces. The classification of femoral shaft fractures can be either through the Muller AO system. However, this is quite complex. The Winquist and Hansen classification can also be used and is based on the extent of comminution of the fracture. Practically, anatomical description is the simplest way. So, to describe a femoral shaft fracture, first you talk about the location, whether it's proximal, mid, or distal shaft, configuration, whether it's a transverse fracture, oblique fracture, or a spiral fracture, and then lastly, the number of fragments. So for example, in this example, you have a mid to distal shaft spiral fracture of the femur. In terms of the cause of a femoral shaft fracture, trauma is the most common mechanism of these fractures. In children, femoral fractures are typically caused by high energy injuries such as car accidents or falls from a significant height. In adults, car accidents or stress fractures from repetitive exercise. In the elderly, femoral shaft fractures are likely to occur as a result of low energy trauma, usually as a result of osteoporosis, a condition that weakens the bone making them more susceptible to fractures. There are also what's called pathological fractures, which are, for example, due to a metastatic process of cancer in the bone. Finally, there are also things called atypical fractures, which are related to bisphosphonate use, an anti-resorptive agent for osteoporosis. 
Symptoms of femoral fractures may include severe pain in the thigh or groin area on the affected side, swelling and bruising, inability to weight bear on the affected leg, and deformity or a visible bump on the thigh. In terms of examination, it may reveal a tense swollen thigh. Blood loss in a closed femoral shaft fracture is usually about 1 to 1.5 liters. Blood loss in open fractures may be double that of a closed fracture. Again, when looking at someone with a femoral shaft fracture, they will have usually a shortened leg on the affected side and tenderness around the thigh. Please be wary of associated injuries, such as injuries to the head, neck, ribs, hip, or knee. In terms of diagnosis, femoral fractures are typically diagnosed with a physical examination, x-ray, and sometimes a CT scan may be warranted. Treatment. Once a diagnosis has been made, treatment options include non-surgical treatment, or surgical treatment. Surgical treatment involves intramedullary nailing, usually the method that is appropriate in adults. Plate and screw constructs can be used if there is a distal metaphyseal extension. Temporary external fixation is occasionally required when patient is unstable or has multiple injuries. And then this can be followed by an actual intramedullary nail once the patient is stable. For children, usually a non-operative measure is used because femoral fractures nearly always heal and remodel. Following surgical or non-surgical approach, rehab and exercise is important. It is important to note that there are many complications associated with femoral shaft fractures pre and post-surgery. These include compartment syndrome, fat embolus with the possibility of acute respiratory distress syndrome following, infection of the actual hip joint itself, pre and post-surgery, non-union of the fracture, thromboembolic disease, neurological injury, malunion, and pressure sores, pneumonia, urinary tract infections, if patients are conservatively treated because they're in bed most of the time. So in summary, femoral shaft fractures occur in children, adults, and elderly. They typically occur in the setting of osteoporosis, which is weakening of the bones. They're classified as either proximal, mid, to distal femoral shaft fractures, and also the mechanism, including trauma or atraumatic. It is important to note for complications associated with these fractures, whether it's pre or post-surgery. Thank you for watching.